This video is for people who use cycles, market geometry, or financial astrology for trading, or they're doing research in those directions. Analyzing analysis means determining what methods you're going to use and how you're going to tabulate and review the results of your research or analysis. Streaks happen refers to, boy, we sure would like to find winning streaks in our trading and keep them consistent. and. To start, let me show you um, what happened to me and how I evolved some of my trading techniques. This is a 2002 chart, Dow Jones Index, and this would be in the realm of financial astrology. The white line at the bottom here, moon declination, the green line is Venus declination. And, and what I noticed, I seem to have picked up a streak that lasted for a little bit over half a year. For most of the time when these two lines, Moon and Venus, intersected, I was picking pivot points. Not here, but most of the others were picking pivot points. And it ended in March of 2003. You can see, again, clearly it's picking pivot points where it intersects. Before this, it didn't really work. After this, it didn't really work. At the same time, by coincidence, now I'm, I'm trading several markets. I'm a full-time trader at this time. And one of the markets I'm trading, stock indexes, I developed a neural net. And I'm having the most profitable trading year of my career. I'm both swing trading and day trading stock index futures with the same neural net, just adjusted for those two different time frames. But um, I was using um, bonds, U.S. dollar, crude oil, and, and chart, a few simple chart patterns, and it was optimizing, curve fitting, and throwing out predictions that were just accurate over and over for a little bit over half a year. And then it went into an unbelievable losing streak, and I eventually stopped using it. And that neural net never worked again. It had six months of glory, and then it faded into obscurity. At year end of 2003, I'm talking to my, uh, during the year end holidays, I'm talking to trading friends and colleagues, and I was explaining this because it, it confused me how after 14 years, I had been a full-time trader for 14 years at that time. And one person, he was the head trader of a New York hedge fund, he was a friend of mine at that time, and he's also a Mensa card holder, which is our society's way of saying, you're a certified genius. So when he talks, I listen. And he said, well, what happened to you is actually coming from game theory. He, he said, I think, Monte Carlo game theory. That part's not important. He explained the concept of uh, random numbers not being random, that they have clusters, aggregations of similar phenomena. So what I did was I cr let me show you this, uh, because th th this, I believe, is uh, relevant. Let me bring this into this so you can see it. You've probably seen this before in my, I have a fool by random this video, such that th this, these are just random numbers added to another random number. So I'm generating a random number minus 10 to plus 10, and I'm adding it to the prior random number. And it creates things that look like charts. These horizontal lines are random. And um, every time I hit a key, it refreshes itself. And it looks like a chart pattern over and over, you know, basing, draw a trend line, breakouts, you could, whatever, you, whatever type of analysis or chart pattern you're into, my random chart generator can recreate it. And it's all random numbers. What this led me to is um, by the middle of 2004, end of 2004, I'm playing with these concepts. And I started changing the way I viewed markets. I went from um, long-term perspectives narrowing it down to um, entry points from what's the longer term picture. And I started narrowing it down to, you know, there's only one thing that really exists in markets, whether it's a random number series or a real price chart. And that's these clusters, these aggregations of similar phenomena where price will do one thing for a short period of time, then the market condition changes. So I can have small swings. I can have trading ranges and I can have breakouts from trading ranges, three different types of phenomena. Short periods of congestion, short swings going up, short swings going down. And 
at least for me, I know when people look at this, a number of people have looked at this uh, random chart generation, and they, they come away with different conclusions. Oh, everything is fake, or no, this proves everything works, because if you can do it on a random number series, then certainly you can do it on a real price series. I didn't come away with either of those two. I came away, away with, uh, there's only one thing I can really trust. Market conditions exist for a short period of time, and then they change. And they can result in short swings or short periods of congestion. Everything else, in my opinion, just speaking for myself, I'm not trying to sell you a concept, but for me, everything else became a product of my imagination, something that wasn't real, something that I was making up in my head. Let's get back to, um, let me adjust this so I can see it a little bit better. Over here, I ended up developing this rule from my, my experience, and I'll show you uh, with ch in charts exactly what this means and how I came to these conclusions. At significant market turns, one of the events will replicate for several iterations. So if, if that sounds confusing, well, all, all it really means is the following. You have an event, and that event will replicate. The, the, so I have a turning point from one phenomena, and that exact same phenomena will call turning points for a short period of time. And then it won't anymore. Uh, one market condition becomes dominant, and then it just changes. Now, I'm just Yuri, so who's Yuri? But this is Larry Pesavanto. Larry. Everybody likes Larry. 1987, he wrote a book called Astro Cycles to Trader's Viewpoint. Lunar cycles exhibit an unusual characteristic that bears watching. Once the market has shown a tendency to turn on a certain phenomena, it remains that way for at least one or two lunar cycles. In this sentence, the word it is not referring to the lunar phenomena. It's associated with, with any, ev or any event that gets associated with that lunar phenomena, be it a market geometry event, planetary aspect. Um, I don't know about technical indicators, okay? But phenomena will associate itself with a particular lunar, lunar cycle, and it'll last that way for one or two lunar, lunar cycles. Now, um, this was written in 87. This isn't exactly right. It'll associate itself for three or four lunar cycles. It takes one lunar cycle to spot it, and then you can milk it for uh, a few more lunar cycles. But the problem is, and now we're starting to get into the, the uh, meat of the presentation. I mean, winning streaks, yeah, you all know it happens, so what can we do to spot them earlier? So we're going to get into that now. But first, I have to... Um, kind of knock your research, our research, traditional research methods a little to be able to do that. This is a very strong statement. Long-term data analysis may be undermining your research efforts. It's inappropriate for swing trading. That's counterintuitive for most people because most people think the more data I use, the better. But if you use the paradigm of market conditions exist for a short period of time and then they change, that doesn't work. Here's an example. Um, if I'm using, for example, that Moon-Venus declination slide we looked at a moment ago. If it's picking pivots successfully for three to five months, but not before or after, if I'm looking at a five-year period and I'm statistically summarizing the results, you're not going to catch that streak, obviously. It, it, it won't even be something you're looking for in the future to possibly repeat again. But uh, let, let's say you're not doing that. Let's say you're doing short time slices to try to identify streaks. It depends on how you're tabulating your statistics. For example, let's say you have an event that's awesome. It just picked 10 consecutive pivots, five tops and five bottoms. If your data summary averages this, then it's going to show no predictive value. Five tops, five bottoms will cancel out. I know especially in the realm of financial astrology, um, they look at an event and they say, does this cause the market to go up or does it cause the market to go down? If that's your belief, then your belief is biasing the way you tabulate your statistics. You're going to miss the good stuff. The good stuff being sometimes this picks tops, sometimes it picks bottoms, top, bottom, top, bottom. This is a wonderful thing, but depending on how you tabulate your statistics, your statistical research engine can be canceling out that this is a wonderful pivot picker. I made that up, that word. St 
streaks, which are clusters, when we saw on the randomness chart, we, those things are called clusters. Here I'm calling them streaks because it's trading. Sa same concept, different word. Streaks are considered aberrations by statistical analysts. In other words, if, if you're familiar with scatter diagrams or um, mean deviations, uh, these things like the moon-venus declination are considered aberrations and you're supposed to ignore them. You're supposed to go for an average. But see, these aberrations actually are the best of breed, in my opinion. This is what you want to do. And I want to throw out another concept that you're going to think is crazy, so I'm giving you a heads up. See, this event, this market actually did do a pivot at this point in time, and this event each actually happened. Now, let's say financial astrology is not something you're familiar with. You'll say, well, that's crazy, but, but you know what? This actually happened. Now, you can say, okay, it's a coincidence, there's no cause and effect here. Okay, I can live with that. But these events actually happened. When you take these phenomena, these events, and you say, okay, pivot here, high pivot, low pivot, and you average them out and you come up with something, th that never happened. Averages don't exist. These events exist. Small swings, pivots, events exist. Averages have no tangible reality. You created them with a formula, and your belief system, your value system, gives them some meaning. But in, intrinsically, an average has, I know we're getting to philosophy, but intrinsically, an average has no meaning. You give it meaning. In some cases, averages are useful. In other cases, averages obscure the facts. In short-term analysis, of markets averages obscure the facts. If you're um, a purchaser for a grocery store, averages and seasonality are essential. But we're not talking that, we're talking trading. We're talking being able to find pivots, being able to gauge trend strength. Averages don't have much meaning here. Let's move on. What I moved on to, I want to show you because this is, this is kind of hot. This is actually one of the slides at this point in time. You can see I'm in late 2004, and I changed my concept of clusters. It evolved into something a little bit bigger that I'm going to call mirroring for now. M mirroring, you might hear this concept, uh, Wells Wilder's atom theory. Michael Jensen's market geometry uses mirroring. Patrick McCullough's uh, market warrior software has a mirroring technique. Our, our timing solution software. When you're inside here, patterns, similarity, or if you own Terra Incognita and you're in the cycles library, these are mirroring techniques. They're taking prior historical data and seeing if the chart patterns or the projection lines of those chart patterns in the past equal what's happening now. Because if they do, then what happened in the past will probably happen now. So they're trying to find the mirror image of this chart pattern in the past to predict what will happen next. And that's a mirroring technique. So there's different variations of mirroring technique, but I want to show you how I did mine and how it kept on evolving. So this is a Fibonacci arc, Fibonacci ellipse. You, you simply connect the relatively significant high to a relatively significant low. And what I noticed was I was trying to predict the future, but my eye kept on being drawn to the past. And what I was noticing was, well, that's interesting because the same arc that caught these two pivots here, caught a pivot here. And you can see it over here. Significant low, kind of significant high. The same arc that caught pivots here, caught pivots here. As if this arc had some kind of mirroring capability, or it, it became an activated line, whatever terminology you want to use, but something that worked in the past that may not have been noticeable at this point in time because these lows and highs hadn't even happened yet. So this line could not have been drawn here because this and this had not happened yet. So an event didn't really, you know, the, the language now becomes very cumbersome. We can't accurately describe this in our language because 
this event didn't go back into the past and cause this, obviously not. So what is this? Who knows? That's for philosophers to decide. We're not philosophers here. But one thing I do know is that consistently I was getting results like this where I can determine whether or not to use one of these lines for predictive purposes if it had caused a similar effect in the past before I was even able to draw the line. So I call that mirroring. High to low. Uh, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. It has predictive value. I think that's the same, same chart. We're just moving forward. It's the exact same chart. We're just moving forward in time and, and you know, connect that to that and pivot here, pivot here. Market slides up on this one. Market slides down on that one. And this one, I like this one because it has nice colors. But um, it's a similar concept, except it just looks better. But low to high. And you can just see this over and over. Now, this is 2004, 2005, and this is not yet for me a mature concept. It's a developing concept. I'm noticing it. It's good. I'm starting to use it. I don't know where I'm going to take it, but I know I'm onto something. So where it ended up uh, going uh, actually is a place like this where <laughs> right now it's an unbelievable concept and I'll call this planetary geometry this is a combination of ge uh, market geometry and planetary movement and I could do unbelievable things with this and um, I'm going to use this as a way to seg you into another topic or you know, it's the same look concept with the um, fit fit bark where you know if I'm calling a market, like if I get a market reaction here, I'm going to get a market reaction someplace else. You know, if we get a market reaction here, I get a market reaction here. You know, su support held. When support broke, it became resistance. And you can see that happening. You know, so it's a very similar concept. This line is working. This line is working. This line is working. So. And this is absolutely unbelievable to me, like this one here, you know. So I, I can do this stuff. I, I, I know the rules for using this, what to connect, all that. It's, it's an evolved concept. This is, you know, what I, I can do now. But um, I'm not going to talk about how I do this. That, that's for the future, some other video. But the idea is, is that this mirroring concept can be unbelievably powerful. You know, where if I see this happening and because these, these are the pivots if I see this then I know this is going to happen and I know it's going to when it touches this react so I have an unbelievably clear easy swing here to here, here unbelievably easy trading based on things that most people don't even know exist and they don't know the tools they don't know the rules they don't know the concept so this is done in timing solution so I'm going to uh, seg you now into another topic from this that uses, what is this really doing? All I got to do is figure out how I'm going to do that. I got to talk about uh, forecasts. So I'm starting to seg you into another topic and I will be referring back to this mirroring concept. In, in timing solution, um, we have the ability to run multiple types of forecasts, EC cycles, turbo cycles, spectrum, physical cycles, astronomical cycles, neural net cycles, uh, natural cycles. We have many different ways of creating forecasts. And um, we're getting good at it. I don't, I don't think Sergey would argue that we're not there yet in terms of having a, a product that you can just run, run forecast and just trade from that one forecast for months and months and months. But what we do have in Timing Solution, I believe, is um, techniques that let us, um, if you look at my other videos, swing trading pivots, stock swing pivots, um, and some of the other things I'll be doing in the next few weeks, um, stepping, equidistant lines, and then market geometry is even beyond that, the stuff that's up here. We, we have in our possession um, some of the best pivot protection techniques imaginable. You know, I, I just, yes, this is Sunday morning I'm doing this. Yesterday afternoon uh, a lady asked me a question and, and it was regarding IBM stock. So 
in a matter of minutes, I, I load up IBM stock. I, I, I already know um, the, natal ch the natal chart for, um, I think I have it loaded, IBM natal chart. You know, I there are several things that say Mars is a significant planet for IBM. And within five minutes, I load the chart. I already know Mars is a significant planet. And I ran um, a very quick ULE. And it produced, the for IBM, I was simply using the planet Mars, transit to natal, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, because Mars and Jupiter are in conjunction, the Sun is the planet's the identity, Mars, because this is Mars, Jupiter conjunction with Mars, Saturn's a reciprocal to Mars, Uranus, planet of change. Unbelievably simple financial astrology. This is Financial Astrology 101. And I'm running hard aspects, the hard guys, 90, 180, 45. And I get something that looks like this. Pivot, 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 pivot. Eh, not a pivot, so maybe you shouldn't use it, but um, pivot. Th the thing is, this took me five minutes from when I launched Timing Solution to when I'm looking at this five minutes. Now, how many things out there can you do this with? I'm serious. I mean, like, really. O or, you know, you say, well, I got this other software that lets me run planetary aspects. That's wonderful. But when you look at the graphic ephemeris stuff, now, this is not a Timing Solution marketing video. I'm because what I'm going to do next, you'll realize that, no, this is not a Timing Solution marketing video. I'm trying to introduce a new concept here. And the concept I'm trying to introduce here is when you use the forecasting tools, they have limitations. I'm just expressing my opinion, but uh, inside Timing Solution, to, for, for me, the irony is, is that we have uh, available to us some of the most incredible tools for picking pivots imaginable, and it's pretty much a finished product. There's not much research. I mean, I'm not, I haven't done any research since the end of 2008. Okay, I'm, I finished, done. I, I can't take my pivot selection criteria or methods any further, but I don't have to. But forecasting and cycles analysis, that's still a work in progress. So I could say tongue in cheek while you're trying to develop the holy grail of forecasting, why don't you take a look at developing a trading methodology based on pivot prediction. Now, when you say pivot prediction, are you saying that because you're trying to, for example, capture the most po of the swing possible for your profits? No. <laughs> I never said that. You may have thought that. I never said that. What I'm trying to do with pivot prediction, especially when you look at like my um, swing pivot video, what I'm trying to do is create a system where I have the smallest possible stop loss. And by picking pivots accurately, that allows me to trade with the smallest possible stop loss because this process of trading is primarily about risk control. And over a long series of runs, if I can control my risk, then I know I'm going to be a profitable trader. If I can't control my risk adequately, then I, I can't become a very prof I may be a break even trader or a slightly profitable trader, but I'm not going to be a trade for a living type trader. <coughs> the problem with forecasts is that they're not going to pick stuff to the day. They're going to be off by a couple of days. So forecasts can be used when you have a trade and you're trying to determine, will this be um, a small swing, intermediate term swing, large swing? But you've got your multiple pivot picking techniques in place, all confirming, hey, this is going to be a change in trend in the market. See, that's when I think forecasts can be very useful for you. Um, I know longer term forecasts exist. The 4.2 year Mars Uranus cycle, the 50 plus year chondrative cycle, the 20 year uh, mutation, lesser mutation cycle between Jupiter and Saturn, the 200 year greater mutation cycle. 
they all exist, they can all be proved with data, but the problem for trading is they're not accurate to the day or sometimes even the week, sometimes not even the month. And sometimes cycles invert. So I can never make forecasting or cycles my primary trading medium. They become second tier where they become useful after I determine there's going to be a change in trend here. I have multiple things telling me so. So now I can use that cycle to determine trend strength, etc. In, in that nature. Now the reason, the other thing here I want you to be aware of, you probably read this already since it's on the screen, but um, you know, a lot of us financial astrologers who are on the Timing Solution Forum, we believe that whether it's an astro cycle or a physical cycle, th they're caused by the movements of planets. Primarily the outer planets, uh, using an analogy, the outer planets are like the conductors, the inner planets are the musicians. And the movement of outer planets impacts the effects that the inner planets have. If you start using more than five, four or five years worth of data, you're going to start canceling out what the inner planets are doing. You're going to start canceling out what I call the streaks or clusters. The stuff that you actually might want if you're a short-term swing trader. You know, if, if you're looking for trades that last several years, maybe not, but um, if you're looking for trades that last several years, I, I, I don't know how, I don't think people trade that way anymore. All cycles are contained within larger cycles. This is a little difficult to understand, but not that difficult. All cycles can be decomposed into smaller cycles, and each cycle can be inverting. So a cycle is a member of a larger group, and each cycle can be decomposed into smaller cycles. Since some of those cycles will be inverting, you're never, ever, ever going to find a forecast which is always going to be consistent. It just can't happen. Impossible. And this explains it. And that, that adds a little more effect because you're going to be using multiple years of data. And if you believe, like a lot of us believe, that um, there's no such thing as a physical cycle, it has no tangible reality, there actually are things called planets. You, you can touch them. You can see them. Physical cycles, it's made up in your head. Planetary cycles, they actually exist. So um, if you're along those lines of thinking, then these two means you're never really going to find a holy grail of forecasting. You're always going to be trying to enhance, and you're never going to get it exactly the way you want it. But with swing pivot prediction, um, I think we've done it. I, I, I think it's no longer uh, work that's in development. Now, you may be new to this process and you're learning it, but I'm not the only person that's uh, around that's saying, hey, I think we did it. I think it's done. I think it's a finished product. And look, there's a blank slide, which means I've probably come to about the end of my presentation. Let me just check my notes here. Oh, congratulations. We came to the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, it makes a little bit of a, a dent into the way you view um, predictive techniques. Um, one of the reasons I did this video was because in the coming weeks we'll be getting into uh, some of the uh, tools in here. And then we'll be getting into some of the tools. Uh, get back here. Some of the tools and the drawing tools. And these are actually just as powerful. Actually, they're more powerful. They're, they're more difficult to apply, but they're more powerful than what you're going to find in here. But they're more difficult to apply. So I have to kind of get people to understand what, what is clustering and streaks mean, what is mirroring mean, because if you don't understand those concepts, you're never going to under understand some of the stuff we're going to be doing. Okay, have a good day.